VCT lock-in has finally started, and the first match of the event was between two teams newly created for Valorant franchising. In one corner, we have NRG. Built around the former core of Optic, they have a solid core of players who are incredibly experienced at international events. That includes probably the best IGL of 2022 in FNS, so hopes were high for the team coming in. The doubts around this roster though came from losing Ye and Marved, arguably the two most impactful players on Optic last year, and if they were really replaceable. NRG picked Ardis to fill in Ye's role, and kept Som on the team as the Smokes player. Could NRG match the level of old Optic, or would the replacements fall flat? In the other corner, we have Koi, a European team which consolidated top talent from across the region to build a pretty scary roster, with two title-winning players in Starks and Shados, and the core from Guild, who actually beat Optic last year at Copenhagen. It was destined to be a great matchup, but whoever lost would be on a plane home straight away. Today, I'll break down how NRG showed they might just be able to rival the level of Optic, with a huge comeback against Koi, including a star performance from one of the new recruits. The map began, and Koi managed to take the first two rounds after Shados won this crucial 1v1 in the pistol, which left them on a bonus round against NRG's full buy in the third. In both rounds, Koi had gone to B, prompting a slight setup change from NRG. Victor and Ardis wanted to fight B main early, with a KO knife off rip and a flash to follow up. Unfortunately, Ardis actually gets flashed by it instead, so it has to back away for a second. In the meantime, Koi destroyed the Killjoy turret in Kitchen, which results in a rotation towards B from FNS and Crashies. This is actually a great read, because Koi are once again looking to go B, and hearing multiple footsteps, Ardis puts up this Sage Wall in B main. They've driven Koi away from main with KO Util and blocked them off with a literal barrier. This is a great B hold from NRG. But that doesn't discourage Koi, and after a slight whiff from Ardis, NRG suddenly start to look uncomfortable. They were expecting Koi to be deterred by this setup, but they're not. Do NRG stay and fight, or back away and abandon all their hard work? Crashes and Victor are on the same wavelength, backing away and giving Koi the space. Ardis though takes a different approach, and looks for a gunfight. Brought back up nice and quick, but Ardis- It's not the end of the world though, as Victor trades out the kill and we reset to a 4v4 situation. Koi don't yet have the sight, and it would be difficult to take it with only this Viper Wall, which can be spammed by FNS from Snowman and Crashes from Sight. But remember that 1v1 in the pistol? That gave Shados some precious ult points, and with a 3k in the second round as well, he now has a Killjoy lockdown. This forces NRG to leave the site, and guarantees a plant for Koi. They fall back to B main, and we get the Icebox post plant we know and love. But there was a secret factor here that may have single-handedly lost NRG this entire round. Did you spot it? It's this Viper Orb. At first glance, it might seem like an attacking Viper Orb, put there by Koi to allow a safe exit to B main. But take another look. There's no red here, it's actually the defensive Viper Orb, accidentally left up by Som. And it's also accidentally perfect for Koi to get out without being seen by FNS, a small mistake here by Som. Notice who used it to escape too, Trex, keep his name in mind for the rest of the round. Koi have literally zero util for the post plant, so they send Starkso on a late flank through mid to try and disrupt NRG's retake. It works, and he manages to distract Victor, and in the meantime, Trex mows them down. That's one Viper Orb being left up meant Trek survived and won the round for his team. It's incredible how rounds come down to a press of a key sometimes. That wouldn't be the end of Som's unfortunate rounds in this first half though. The score eventually reached 8-2 to Koi, with two rounds left in the half. If NRG let both of these slip, there's almost no chance for a comeback. And when the pressure on NRG is at an all-time high, Koi let them drown in it. After showing some light presence on A, Koi wait 40 seconds with three players at the top of Tube. FNS is watching for anyone going underneath, but doesn't know there's a whole team breathing down his neck. Eventually, they make their move, and FNS, despite clearly panicking, and fair enough, I would be scared too, manages to get one before dying. It's all pretty chaotic, and Crashies adds to this by using his Sova ult into orange. He tags Starkso for 80 damage, and Som comes over to finish the kill while Starkso is doing his best Ninja Warrior impression. Wait, what? How? The classic crouch spray has haunted Som in a huge moment for this match. Trex catches two players in his mid lurk, he's 18 and 5 by the way, and that's round over, 9 to 2. The only way NRG come back from this is if Som and Ardis can get back on their feet and play to their top level. Force them even deeper, there's a pinch coming through from Victor, potentially with this aggress aggression mm. on A. And here's the burst again. Orphan instantly going to fight towards Som. Som great dealing with the first though, front line dealt with, now you've got to look towards who else is remaining. We know that Koi are running as a pack in this. There's three players who are the heavy hitters and they're mostly still standing. Som though yet to be cleared fully from this. Rez comes in, do they get a partner? Shoot! From Som! Holding it down and giving NRG the finest amount of hope, the thinnest amount to work with, as three rounds is really the bare minimum. That might help. 
And so the half ends 9-3, and we all know the tale of the 9-3 curse. After Pistol and a bonus round wins, NRG find themselves closing the gap at 9-6. In this round, Koya on an eco, but we know how dangerous these thrifties can be. Both teams begin the round at A with a gamble stack from Koi, something NRG will want to avoid pushing. They eventually feel out the stack and decide to rotate it to B after Ardis gets the first pick. NRG aren't the only ones who decide to leave A though, and this means we basically get the same situation on the B site, only now in a 5v4. NRG collapse onto the site, but with only 30 seconds left, if the plant gets denied, this could be dangerous. One player drops, Spike gets lost, Util gets burnt up, 25 seconds now, Mike, this is running down to the wire, Som, trying to do his heroics once Thank again. You. Wall goes up, 18 seconds, I'm still waiting for that plant to come in and if it's safe. It is for now, Victor and Som on the case. But with a blind spray through the wall, Som reduces Koi's numbers, and then holds the off angle perfectly to protect the planter. You can tell he's feeling it now, as he pushes up for the 3k. Som managed to deny any danger in this anti-eco, and since he got the ace in round 12, it seems he just keeps hitting heads. With momentum building for NRG, they managed to get the score to a tied game. 10 to 10, 3 rounds to take it. The next round begins, and Koi have the intention of walking down tube with Wolfen's op. The only problem with that is that they already did it 4 rounds earlier, in the last round they won. NRG are very aware that this strategy is the only real one that worked for Koi, and as a result, they changed their mid setup. Victor is still holding it solo, but instead the Killjoy turret takes first contact, which distracts Wolfen, netting Victor the kill. Starkso can't realistically refight the angle or use his res on the body, so he backs out of tube, but this opens a gap. And if we know anything about FNS's IGLing, Optic's signature play was always a contact push when they had a hard read like this, so NRG begin pushing. It's the perfect push. Shados is the only player on this side of the map, and he has no info you tell in Kitchen to let him know that NRG have walked up tube, and so they keep pushing. In fact, they get all the way to the B site completely uncontested. The reason they're able to get so far is because three of the Koi players are pushing A, but Som is aware of that and spots them out. As soon as he sees them, NRG suddenly reveal their presence on the site to Shados, who is completely on an island at Orange. NRG have control of the site, but have to stop this huge flank, and this is where Som comes in. Victor actually set like the oh, default here. Yeah. Love this! Going back in just to ensure that that res does not come through! He knows Koi will look for the res in Chew, so he sticks around to try and punish. He denies the res and takes someone else with him. Great work. Killjoy lockdowns get traded, which stalls a lot of time for the spike to keep ticking. Can FNS and Victor hold it down? He's gonna have his knife back, he's gonna have his flashback, he's got so much kit still to play with, Shadow's still alive, FNS is there, he can get back onto this one. Oh, and Victor's found Starzo! Shadow's with a quick trade, but time is everything, and he's running out for them! FNS, he's he got it in time! It's done for, it's 11 for NRG! That clutch from FNS gave NRG the momentum they needed to complete the comeback, and take Icebox 13-11. They ran with it and knocked Koi out of lock-in, beating them 39 on Haven as well. But the question remains, are they better than Optic? Not yet. That much is obvious. They've only played one series on the international stage, and even if they 13 0 both maps, we couldn't say for sure that they were better than the title winning Optic roster. But could they be? Definitely. It'll all depend on their results across this year, but elements of this series against Koi showed that the replacements they brought in could rival Ye and Marv. We know what Artist is capable of from 2022, and Som's anchoring play on show here was top tier. We'll have to see how they perform during the rest of lock in. But what do you think? Let me know down below. Oh yeah, quick thing as well. I'm on a podcast. Go and watch the Rendezvous podcast, link in description if you're interested. And if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. It really helps me out. I've been Commend, and thanks for watching.